So in this segment, we're going to break down your specific marketing strategy that you love that's going to feel really good and organic that'll help you create influence, income, and time freedom. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Open up to page 26 and 27. Yes, ma'am. Obedient. That's great. So the first question question is, what is next gen marketing? How would you define what's gen marketing? Next gen marketing. Okay. What is what does next gen mean to you, Sabri? We talked about it earlier. What's next gen? Um, marketing and being the top of your industry. Okay. Who wants to add to that? What's next gen? Somebody mentioned something about next level. Oh, I was just going to say that, yeah. And that, that's kind of what I think of, like, the next level from what we've been taught and what we've learned over the, the last 20, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it's taken something. It's a proven system. We're not recreating the wheel here. We're taking the wheel, but how can we make this wheel better? Mm -hmm. Brightening okay. your own light or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being innovative, unique, okay? And then marketing. How would we define marketing? Do your name out there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify marketing. Okay, mm -hmm. giving value, giving and showing value. So next gen marketing is giving our value in a unique, <clears throat> next level way. That is innovative and different, right? Okay, so that is next gen marketing. Okay, so our goal is to get out there. So what happens in the industry? And I see this a lot. Okay, has anyone ever heard of the bell curve? Mm -hmm. Who's heard of the bell curve? Raise your hand. Okay. I saw you raise your hand first. Tell us about the bell curve. The bell curve is you, you've got to start out slow and um, build your build your following, build your um, knowledge, build your product, and the, and you'll reach a peak at some point, and it will start to taper off because you have less energy, less whatever new. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that bell curve to a lot of uh, things, right? The way I refer to the bell curve is with marketing. Okay, there you got the game changers, the people that very early get out there, the early adopters, and then you have the majority, and then you have the late majority, and then you have the laggards, right? So like, we're all in different categories as far as uh, things go when we buy products, like when the new iPhone comes out, game changers, first one out there to go to do it, right? For me, I was like, yeah, somewhere right in the middle, you know, I'll, I'll get it if it makes sense you know, as far as uh, my upgrade goes. So when it comes to marketing, what I see is that if you're not in the game changing and the early adopter phase and you're the average or the laggards, okay, you're trying to implement, it's kind of like what Frank was saying, you're following something that's already been implemented so much to the point where people, as soon as people see it, they go, they're just trying to sell me. Kind of like a magic trick. Like they, they now know the trick and they're like, okay, everyone knows you have the coin in your hand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the same type of effect. Yeah. So next gen marketing is getting out your value in a unique way that is a game changing early adopter that not everyone else in your industry is doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. As soon as you get out something that, that's why, that's why trying to copy what someone else is doing, you're already behind. You're already losing because someone else has already done it and been there. Okay, so if you take nothing else from this workshop, hopefully you take that definition right there. Next gen marketing. Okay, does that make sense? And if you're trying, like you're wondering, okay, what am I doing right now? How can I be more next gen within my marketing? How can I, like, I see someone in my industry or field that's doing really, really well. I honestly don't want to be a follower. So you just have to look at what they're doing and say, okay, that's working because of this way. How can I make it even better? That's how you're an early adopter. Take the wheel. We're not recreating a wheel. We're adding spokes, big sexy tire, and rolling yeah. that thing down the wheel. <laughs> and then we're gonna add spinners. <laughs> yes. Right. The and then other little. <laughs> awesome, Kate. What is your favorite ways of delivering content? Okay, so we're on page 16, right? No, 26. 26. Seven. Okay, so 26. So <laughs> yeah. what's your favorite way of de delivering value? So is it live speaking? Is it presenting? Is it live video? Just video, right? Um, how many people do this? They, they get their phone like, oh, all right, I'm going to do a live video. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. Who's scared of live video? 
Okay, and how many other people do this? Like, all right, I'm gonna do a video. So, hey, my name's Travis Brady, and I'm a. Oh fuck, what am I again? Oh shit, I got. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh man, my hair. I need to. Yeah. Who does that? Raise your hand. Yeah. And you're like, hopefully no one hopped down yet. Right. So you're gonna pick what do you feel like platforms you really enjoy? Okay. So I'm not saying you're good at it, just saying you enjoy it. Okay, we're just talking about what we enjoy. Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it audio podcasting? Is it writing? What what do you enjoy? Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, so let's let's write this down. Okay, so first, so number one is what do I enjoy? Okay, is that important? Yes. Why do you think that's important? Because you're gonna do it more. Yeah. If you don't like doing something, you're not going to do it. When I was working, when I was a personal trainer, I had this idea that they had to work out a certain way. They had to lift weights. They had to do this. What I come to find out is, man, if they didn't enjoy it, then what does it really matter? They're not going to keep this up as far as a lifestyle goes. Okay. So the first thing is you have to enjoy it. If you're trying to do anything that you don't enjoy, okay, or that's not going to be rewarding at some level, then you're barking up the wrong tree. Okay, and that's what, again, going back to some of the problems that we have, oh, follow this strategy, but the problem with strategy is you hate the strategy from the get-go. Does that make sense? Now, this doesn't mean that every part of the strategy you're going to love. True, True or false? True. Okay, I promise you, if you get stuck, well, Travis said, if I don't love it, I don't have to do it. Well, yeah, just sit around all day then, I guess. <laughs> right? You're not going to love everything that you do. Okay. And with that, people will be like, I don't like doing this part. And they get so stuck on that thing that they absolutely hate. And I'm like, we can find other ways to navigate it. And that's the thing is like really hone in on what you enjoy because that's probably what you're the best at. And if you're the best at that, really hone in on that. Take that to the next level. Doesn't mean we don't need to get uncomfortable in some other areas to take you to the next level. But you can do it, I promise. Like you really can. You just have to be willing to go to that uncomfortable level and then enjoy things to a new thing. So what are some things that you guys enjoy? Yeah, that, like that marketing. Are, that are on this list that aren't on this list. Video. Live. Video, live, live, what else? Love it. I like taking pictures. Pictures, I like, I like okay, someone. love it, yeah. She so took a picture from me earlier. Yeah, she so, loves so does Mickey, yeah. <laughs> what else? I love photo editing my photos. Me too. Yeah, me yep. too. making them look professional. I'm like, that was on my phone. I <laughs> trust on so many apps that yep. I use. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Cool. Okay, so uh, next. Okay, well, oh, lost my list. Okay, what are you good at? Okay, so now the next question is what are you good at? This can be heartfelt messages, a loving message from the heart, a story based, and how to's, step by step, a lot of left brain science based stuff, motivational, raw truth, a message from the gut, experience based, inspirational, overall vision and purpose, message from the soul, or results based. Yeah, and so. Um, Essentially, we all have different archetypes, and we've talked about this at other events. We really go in depth at it at Strength Through World. We all have different personalities, not saying we're bipolar or whatever, just saying we all have different energies, right? We have the lover energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're very heartfelt. They're very inspirational, right? They're inspired. Then we have the magician, okay? Uh, Frank and Sam, very magician, very step-oriented, very, like, the logic. If it's, not, if it's not making logical sense, then we're not doing it. The warrior is going to be more of like the gut feel, like I'm sharing the experiences, what I've really went through, right? And then your king, okay, and queen is they've they've had the results. They're sharing more of a, a, a in, from a grand grander influence. So if you look at the way that these are actually structured, okay, the first part of them are actually lover, heartfelt messages, loving message from the heart, story story based, okay, that's a lover. Okay, the magician is how to step by step left brain science based. Okay, that's a magician. Okay, motivational raw truth message from the gut experience based. That's the type I like to share because again, that's part of my archetype, which is the warrior. Okay, and then also what I enjoy doing is inspirational overall vision and purpose message from the soul results space okay so going with your energy rather than against your energy does that make sense and truly embracing it so josh Duninga, you're going to hear him speak later he did the meditation earlier he is like the lover of lovers and we just love that about him and like his ability to connect is what makes him such an amazing real estate agent like 
his clients are family. That is his business motto. Like that is everything to him. And that is around his archetype and what he's good at. He's good at making people feel loved. Yep. Mm -hmm. So second thing is now what do I enjoy is what am I good at? Okay. Okay. So put a one and two by those. Okay. So now the, the third thing is, is where are my ideal clients at? Okay, where, where are they hanging out at? So me and Rocky did a live and we were talking about marketing and one concept that I brought up was where is your water hole? Okay, and what I mean by that is if you went to Africa or the safari and you wanted to see animals, where you're probably going to see the most animals is where the watering hole is at, where everyone goes to get water. So where is your watering hole at? Where do all your ideal clients or people like you like to gather? Okay. And so now it's looking at not just on social media, but out in the world saying, yeah, where do, where do these people gather at? Okay. And then guess where we do? What do we do, Barbie? Go and bark it at the watering hole. Yeah, <laughs> we go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this, you guys, you want to be creative. So Savory, she does her. Do you think if Savory goes to a bar or a club hanging out with Josh, her amazing boyfriend, and they're just hanging out there, do you think she's going to connect with clients that actually care about their hair at a club? Yeah. yeah. Like you're going to have women that take care of their hair, right? Because they're all dolled up and they're at the club. There's a lot of different places that you can really be creative of like where would they be, mm -hmm. right? Where aren't people thinking about it? And she's awesome. She like connects with everyone. That's how you want to be is go connect with people and mark it at your watering hole, <laughs> right? I just want to put watering hole now. Okay. <laughs> Where's your water hole? So I put, uh, who likes, who follows Grant Cardone is listening to Car Grant Cardone. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand high so I can see. Okay. So I put, what does, what would Grant Cardone say about this? What would be one oh, of Oh, this is going to be good. Who knows Grant Cardone? You'd have to... <laughs> no, you have to know him. Get so, attention. what? Get attention. Get attention. Yeah, yeah, Grant come. Like, but you have to talk like him. Dude, no, dude, dude, it, it, dude it, it, you got to get attention, man. <laughs> and, and that's your problem, dude. And, and if you ain't, dude, you're broke, bro. You got to get money. Here's what Grant Cardone said. You're messing your house. You're messing your brain. <laughs> yeah, Ellie. Uh, I can go Grant Cardone all day. Yes, he can. So yes, here's he can. here's what Grant Cardone would say. He'd be like, dude, who has your money, man? <laughs> who got your money? You got to wake up every single day and go, who has my money, man? Okay. Who has your money, Sabri? No. Who, no. Has, who has your money? Who has your money? Who has your money, Josh? Oh, future home buyers. Future home buyers. Who has your money? Future people are trying to change their lives. Yeah. Okay. Who, and, and again, it's a, and that's what I love about Grant Cardone. He's, he's very blunt. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. Through and through. And <laughs> I wish, I, I've had a chance, I'll, I'll be completely honest. When I met Elena Cardone, I was kind of uh, thinking that she's going to be the secret bitch or something like that. She is so she's not so like not. that at all. She's she is so be. authentic and real. I loved hanging out with her. And I just, I believe that they're very heartfelt people. They're just very like driven, like warrior-ish, like let's go get it. And that's sometimes what you got to look at. Like, yeah, who who has the money that I can actually help them deliver value to? Because they, if they have money, I have value to deliver to them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovers so, probably have the hardest time hearing that statement because they're like, no, but who wants to connect? <laughs> who wants to love, right? And so you probably need some of that warrior in your life. Like if you're a lover struggling, kind of getting up and going and getting that umph, you need like a Grant Cardone to listen to that's going to help bring out that warrior in you. Lovers need warriors. Mm -hmm. Warriors need lovers. Magicians yes. need kings and queens. Kings and queens need magicians. And here's the thing. Yep. Lovers don't like the warriors. <laughs> warriors don't like the lovers. Yep. Magicians don't like the kings and queens. The end, the, sometimes the person that triggers you the most is probably the person that you need to learn from the most. Mm -hmm. Yep. When it comes to like learning your craft and your business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when I piss people off, who do I usually piss people off? You piss off the magicians for yeah. your spelling. Yeah, I piss off the magicians. They pick apart his posts. Like, they will literally, like, just correct with spelling corrections. And I'm like, well, it's engagement. Fuck it. <laughs> I, piss, I piss off the magicians, yep. and I piss off the lovers. 
Why? Because I'm warrior king. Not that I don't have a lot of lover. Okay, so you got to realize too, your archetype, when you start sharing online, okay, and if you're a warrior and you start putting out content, who are you going to offend? Lovers. You might offend the lovers. Okay, so you got to know this. You got to know going in that not everyone's going to agree with your stuff. Okay? But well, what are you good at? It goes back to what are you good at though? You got to hone in on your strengths and still be able to channel all the others, but really, really be good at your strengths and own that because yeah. that's going to attract your ideal person. Your ideal client is always a version of you. Always, always, always. That is the person that you can help. Okay, next question. Okay, what is the difference between a value deal and a free offer? Okay, we forgot that one. Well, you skipped it. Okay, so should you <laughs> so should you build your business We're around your life? Yep. Or should you build your life around your business? What do you think? Should you build your life around business your business? Around your life. Or should you build your life around your, yeah, should you build your life around your business or your business around your life? Let's have them raise hands and see who feels what. Okay, should you build your life around your business? Raise your hand. Life around your business. Raise your hand high. We want to see. So life around your business or business around your life. Which one is first priority when like scheduling and things is what I'm trying to say. So life around business. So life takes priority first. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's or it depends on the season. Yeah. Or, which one do I want or which one do I need? Which? That's exactly right. That is fantastic. So let's do this. <laughs> Who right now feels like they're building their life around their business? Raise their hand. Okay. Who right now feels like they're building the opposite? Their business around their life. Business around your life. Okay. That's which, what you want to do, though, right? Well, which one? Sh which one should we do? Business around your life. Business around your life. Why? Because that way you're not you're not waking up every morning to go work on your business. You're waking up every morning to enjoy your life, and then your business fuels your life. Okay, I like that. It's like you're working to, work, to, work to live. To live. Instead of to work. Just okay. Mic drop. Say say that again. You're working to live instead of living to work. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I always ask that question is because when people go, well, that that's kind of manipulative or that doesn't feel very good. Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you are building your life around your business, then yeah, I can totally see why that feels inauthentic to you. However, if you're saying, you know what, I want to live life. Let's say money doesn't mean anything. I love what Sam said earlier. Money doesn't mean anything. What do we wake up doing each day? I, if, if money didn't matter, Okay, I would go hang out on the beach, drink Coronas for a week, get hammered, play in the plate, make sandcastles. Okay, I would get ran over by the water, get out, do it again. That's fun. I love splashing in the water, okay, in the beach. Okay. He does. Yeah. Just, just get rolled over, tanked out by the water, right? Pause. On our honeymoon, he goes out and does that, and he comes back, he's like, I just fell on my head. I think I almost died. Oh my God. Great. Just buy yourself. Those water, that water's powerful. Thanks, Sam, for the life insurance. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> so that sounds fun for about a week, but how purposeless is that in a life? So I really, like, you should ask your, yourself always, mm -hmm. like, what is my why? Like people go ask themselves that question maybe once a life, once a decade, once every five years. I've asked myself that question more in the last year than I probably ever have. And the reason why you want to ask that question is because the more you can ask the question, why am I doing what I'm doing to make sure that is in alignment with you. I enjoy traveling. Mm -hmm. I enjoy speaking. I enjoy groups of people together. I like hot weather. Well, this is why we're all here right now is because I <laughs> enjoy those things. And so I'm going to build my life is the first priority i enjoy doing those things and when you start from that standpoint guys and you start plugging this in now it starts to feel more organic now it starts to feel more natural and now the relationships that you're building in business are going to start to happen more effort effortlessly rather than feeling like fixed and it's just an arrangement does that make sense and marketing is more fun i was telling shauna the flight here we connected with um, people from Salt Lake that actually owned restaurants. And we were having a conversation. I was saying, I've gotten so many clients from flights. So many clients from flights. And she's like, how do you do that? I'm like, we just talk. Mm -hmm. We just talk. I'm mm -hmm. traveling. I love to travel. And I have a motto, like, wherever you go, you need to make a new connection and always have a new follower. Like, it's your life. Live your life. 
that that's how it should be we love cruises cruises are fun we take all of our clients on a cruise every year hell yeah right off win <laughs> and it's so fun and we love our clients their family so it's like a big family reunion every year and it's awesome and so that is why we we've built it this way that's why we've done retreats that's why we do everything it's our life comes first our baby comes first Tatum usually is on stage at the very end of all of our events. He'll be at the cocktail party in his little tuxedo. He's so cute. <laughs> so. I know, he's so cute. Will you guys be matching? No. Why have we not done that? Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> no, she just so opened up a can of worms. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> I'm going to be manning the door. Where's that Amazon guy? I know. It didn't up. come. I don't know. <laughs> It got stolen. All they took was that. <laughs> no, that would be pretty cool. I would. Yeah, you look fly. Okay, next okay. question. What is the difference between a value deal and a free offer? Okay, be, um, oh, I so let, let's, combine, let's combine all this together. So what are you enjoy? What are you good at? Ideal client. So I want you to start to summarize that. What are some things that you can come up with now? Okay, where you start to market. So take in, for example, I enjoy speaking okay i'm good at in-person experiences okay so yeah live event makes real sense to me so start to write some ideas where you see yourself marketing okay now, even with covid one thing we asked ourselves is do we want to still do live events and one thing i want to point out even tony robbins one of the top leader industry he actually put his events on hold we are the only coaches I know that did not put events on hold and continue to still do them because our deal, ideal client still wants to connect. Mm -hmm. Our ideal person is the people that still want to connect with us. Others are in this room, right? So 100% still doing events during this time. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'll remind them of the next question now. Oh, yes. So what is the difference between a value deal and a free offer? Okay, so put value deal versus free offer. Do you want it as number four? Uh, no, just okay. do it separate. So what's the difference between a value deal and a free offer? So what's a free offer? Free something deal. to get them in the door. Just to come in and something get that's free, free. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? There's free. no cost. It's a free offer, okay? Mm -hmm. Why do we offer free offers? Right. In the hopes of getting it's yeah. a taste. It's a taste. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. to let them taste out and experience what it's like to your product, your service, mm -hmm. some level. So when you go to Costco, Saturday oh, yes. afternoon, <laughs> okay, yep. it's lunchtime, right? How yep. many different how many different samplings are you getting? All of them. All of them. Yeah. She has an exact number. Twenty and then I've done. Yeah. So why why do they give away that sampling for free? So you buy the product. They know that the more likely someone is to taste it and try it, that they're more likely to commit to it. You got to think of you dating your customers. Okay. Did I meet Minky and go, I want to marry her? Well, she did. I didn't. Not <laughs> that way. I fell in love on the first date. Oh, the first date. Yeah. You got me there. Okay. So that's what you got to think about is how how are you approaching it from like almost like a dating relationship, right? They're not going to marry you if they just met you. They're not going to marry your product if they just met you, right? So offering a free offer. So what are some free offers that you can throw out, okay? So I want you to start writing some of those down. What are some free offers you can start to make in your business? And if you don't have a free offer and you're like, feel like you're pulling back on being able to offer a free offer, it's because you don't have enough value in your programs. You should have enough value in your programs and services that you have a value-free offer that is still free and has massive value and you still have more to give them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll get into the specifics as far as how to do those free offers. I know, mm -hmm. I just want you to look at what are some free offers I can make right now. Yep. Okay. So next one is a value deal. Okay. Actually, let me give you guys some time to write what are some free offers. So start listing them out. You don't have to marry any of these ideas right now. Okay, just start getting them out of your head onto your paper, okay, so you can start to see them. Okay, and the reason why writing stuff is so important, guys, if you just think it in your head, it continues to weigh on you. Uh -huh. Okay, it's going to give you anxiety. Okay, trust me. Okay, you need to get your ideas on paper so you can see them. That's why, going back to what Sam does, that's why he helps people, like the first thing he does is help them see their finances. Uh -huh. Okay, if you don't see it, 
then it's going to give you stress. It's going to weigh down on you. So the first step is make sure that you always get ideas out on paper. Okay. If you go into my office, I have an entire like thing of journals of all the shit I've written over the years. Okay. My ideas just, okay. Mm -hmm. You good? Getting all the free offers out. Okay. So now what's a value deal? What's an example of a value deal? So value deal, so this is how I would define a value deal. A deal that does cost money, but you're not really making a lot of money off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a step up from that free offer. Okay, so it's something that you're putting out. Mm -hmm. It does cost money, but you're not really making a whole lot of money. And even sometimes you're breaking even and maybe even losing a little bit of money, but your whole Focus again is like what we were saying before. It's like the free offer. We know that if they try it, we know that they're going to be more likely to purchase it. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so I want you to start writing. What are some value deals you can start doing? A lot of clothing companies do this. They'll say like twenty five dollars off your first order, and then you're or just pay shipping. Have you guys ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Just pay shipping. Mm -hmm. That's them breaking even. Actually, even losing just a little bit because they're fronting the cost of wholesale. But that's a value deal. You're still paying something. Hmm? So that's one value. Okay, what's your next question? Sorry, throw my phone. Uh, what what value deal or free offers do I need to create? Okay, so we got that. Okay, what is your one value deal or free offer that you need to focus on first? Okay, so now you're going to circle one free value. <clears throat> free offer and one value deal. So look at those. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want everyone to stand up. Okay. As soon as you decide, as soon as you decided which one's which, I want you to go ahead and stand up. So okay. as soon as you know this is the value deal I need to implement and this is the free offer I need to implement. Okay. Yep. As soon as you realize that what it is, go ahead and stand up. ideas. <laughs> Don't go to an event with me. I will talk your ear off during breaks. <laughs> How all these ideas? <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> she really does. Yeah. It's, bad. it's good though. It's just a lot. <laughs> Constantly speaking into a recorder. I should. Have you ever seen suits? <laughs> you would get it if I said that. <laughs> she gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to tell them what your value deal is and what your free offer is. Okay, ready and go. What do you think happens online? People forget. Easy. If you threw out your free offer once, what can happen? Get lost. Lost. Forget about it. May not even see it. May not even <laughs> see it. Okay, now not to put him on the spot, okay? That's no, okay, it's my bad. No, 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 it's not your bad. It's not. Okay, it's not your bad. If I was coaching you, yes, it is, but I'm not going to coach you right now. I'm going to coach you. Why doesn't he know? Because I got much more excited about my client. He was like, what are you doing? I'm yes. like, oh, let me tell you. So, so, see, so see where the emotion went and see what he memorized? That's a classic example of what I was saying earlier. Where there's emotion, you're just going to memorize. Okay. And her why, lover just wanted to connect. Why why don't we remember anything we learned in elementary and junior high? Cause it's boring <laughs> as shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> boring as shit. Okay, I've had more fun learning about history from Frank <laughs> yeah. and my friend Cody than I ever did in school. Actually, yeah, my, my best college class was in uh, my best history class was in college because the professor brought so much emotion into it, okay? So again, how are you presenting this offer? 
Okay, so this is a good example right from the get-go. Okay, so if I were to coach each and one, every one of you, I'm not gonna say, hey, it's not her fault, okay? And that's what we tend to do in business. We go, well, I put it out there, but no one really understood it. It's like, no, that's your responsibility. You need to be accountable to that. Yeah. The reason, you, you can't blame everyone else in the world because they're not seeing what you see and knowing the value. You're not presenting it. And so that's why I was saying earlier, it's where people like to step into, well, I don't think I'm good enough or I'm not enough. It's like, no, the way you presented it wasn't enough for that person to actually make a good decision to want it. Okay, is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. It's always your responsibility. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Diesel Brothers show. Yeah, we were like just with Keaton Heavy last weekend. And Diesel Dave. <laughs> well, Diesel Dave is the face of the company because he, he is that. Mm -hmm. Like he's excited about sharing what they do and getting people out there. And because he responds that way, he's the face of the company, mm -hmm. and Heavy D's not, because he's not how Diesel Dave is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Own, owning their different parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming over here, whose partner's over here? Whose partner's over here? You two? They're scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were partners. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what was her value deal? What was Madeline's what was value deal? Yeah, what was her value deal? Okay, um, so she has a... Don't peek in, you cheater. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a good partner. <laughs> She's <laughs> been, <laughs> know what? It's funny, is, is you're hurting party. you <laughs> by showing her the answer. <laughs> no, I really do know her. Okay, body. go, go. No, so what's so great about her business is that she has actual products. And so we were coming up with an idea of um, having every month her own favorite product and having a value deal with that way, that way her clients can connect to her on mm -hmm. a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is that value deal? Specifically. Yeah, if you join a challenge, you get like these certain products, or if you buy these certain products, you get access to like this challenge. Or, okay, so know. let's nail it down into one value deal. You buy this product, you get this challenge. So what's that one, what's that one value deal? Oh, it's like, so, t so, t so tell everyone what you do real quick. Oh, yeah. I'm a health coach. Health coach. Yeah, with Herbalife. Okay, with Herbalife. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're trying to sell your products. Yes. Okay, so what's the value deal? So you buy from Alexa, and then you get access to a challenge. Like how to make all, all our delicious fat burning shots and the recipes and all that stuff. What's pro, what did you call it? Um, it's called Prolessa. It's a fat reduction powder. It's our number one seller. Fat. Prolessa. Reduction. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why did you call it Prolessa? Oh, because that's what it's called. Prolessa. But I don't know what Prolessa is. Who knew what Prolessa was? Raise your hand. Ooh. Yeah. So it could be like a yeah. She's like. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> stupefy your yes, names. It has to be stupid. Like that it, sounds bad, but people need to understand simple. it. Simple. Uh -huh. Super simple. Okay. So what did you call it? Uh. Belly burn challenge. Belly burn challenge, and what's the product? <laughs> Prolessa duo. No, it's not. Fat reduction powder. There we go. There we go. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. We, if a sixth grader can't understand what you're saying, it's too complicated. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Write that down. Okay. If a sixth grader can't understand it, it's too complicated. We should bring in like a focus group. We should bring in sixth graders. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do that. Who has a sixth grader we can borrow? You can have a three-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Sixth grader. Okay. So here's your step number one strategy, okay? So we get them into the free offer. Once we get them into the free offer, now we make them a paid offer, okay? Level one, two, or three, okay? Now, mm -hmm. how do we, and so now it's just going back to what we were talking about before. Where's your watering hole? Okay, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Okay, someone said Twitter. Okay, YouTube. Parlor is the new one. It's like unbiased Facebook. Okay, when you meet a new referral, okay, a lot of people, when they meet a new referral, Okay, you instantly go here. Mm -hmm. What happens when you instantly go here with a re referral? What could happen? They leave. Why? Why? Why would they leave? Money. Okay, Casey hit it perfect. Okay, the biggest problem that all of you have in the room 
is they don't see the value the way that you do. And again, you could be a narcissist person and say, it's his fault, I didn't do anything wrong, okay? But you gotta own your influence. Mm -hmm. If you say something and someone goes, I don't understand what you're saying, you can't go, well, you just don't get it. You gotta, like, you're, like, this is gonna sound really rude. The, the people that just don't understand your product and are just stupid, those are the people you need to talk to. Because if you can know how to talk to them and influence them, then everyone else is going to be able to understand it. Does that make sense? Okay. So even if you do meet a referral, I would still send them the free offer. So by the time they get here, they see the value. Remember what I said? If they're willing to give something for free, they know the value of what they have. So true. So true. It shows that you're not in a scarcity mindset. It shows you're not about just the money. You trust it. Trust it. You get a taste of it, right? That free offer they have, they have nothing on the table. It's literally just like a hat. Yep. <laughs> Is, who's ate at Jersey Mike's? Oh, I love Jersey Mike's. I was wondering if they had one here. That oh, they to, oh, oh, they, they already, already knew. I already know that. He scouted out the locations. <laughs> like I got that's one here where last we're buying time. the house. There's one down the street. <laughs> Josh, put that on the geographic. So for my <laughs> birthday last year, I was we were actually getting a new phone, and someone said, hey, it's your birthday. Did you know Jersey Mike's actually gives a free sub? Really? Okay, I'll go check out a free sub. So I go in there, and I get a free sub, and they're making it from me. They're cutting the turkey fresh. They're not shipping in the shit. This is fresh-cut turkey. <laughs> Cheese. Mmm, olive oil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I love it. I love sandwich. sandwiches. Oh, it totally is. Okay, I probably spend, I was calculating it, I probably spend anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks a month on Jersey Mike's. How much do you... Has accounting line. Yeah. <laughs> Travis is in. Double meat, double cheese. <laughs> right? So, they, they sold me, they gave me that sandwich for free. How much did it cost them? A couple, a couple of bucks, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of bucks, right? So them, a couple of bucks, ended up earning them a $500 a year customer. Who's now on stage promoting them. Yeah. You need to be sponsored. I need to get paid. I would be wife of the year. I think you'd propose again. And, and she's going to go into sponsorships. You guys want to learn how to get paid sponsorships? That's the next segment. Yeah, so... I'm really good at it. Same thing happened with Rockwell. I was wearing Rockwell watches. I love Rockwell watches. Guess who's sponsoring me now? Nice. Rockwell. Do you guys know and Rockwell? That's, They're a Utah-based company. They're awesome. And that's an example of building your business around your life. I love Rockwell. I didn't start wearing Rockwell just because they're sponsoring me. I already love Rockwell. Sha Shaquille O'Neal said this, too, and I loved it. He said, I'm not going to... I'm not going to sponsor products I don't believe in. I'm only going to sponsor products I believe in. Okay? I love Rockwell. I don't care if you like my watch. I like my watch. Okay? Okay? And so that's another example. So everyone in this room can do this. Now, sometimes your free offer is just merely them doing a consultation with you, talking to you over the phone. Okay? Everyone in this room has one thing. They have time. Okay? When you're first starting your business, that's what you have the very most. Okay, you have a lot of time. Okay, give away that time. Time is money, true or false. Okay, give them, give them the time. So everyone in this room, regardless of where you're at, start here. This is number one. Okay, don't start with your value deal. If you can't sell a free offer, uh -huh. you can't sell anything else. And if you're already offering free consults, I guarantee it's time to step it up a notch because people are sick of hearing about your free consults. There's time to add something more. Okay. Free before that. And and people and this is where people get stuck mm -hmm. is they go, Well, no one's like I can't even sell my free offer. How am I supposed to sell other stuff? Just because it's free doesn't mean it doesn't cost anything. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just because it's free doesn't mean it costs anything. Your ability to sell a free offer, if you can sell a free offer, you can sell anything else. Okay, you can sell a free offer, you can sell everything else. It's the same mechanics. Okay, so this is where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck is they go, well, no one's buying my free stuff, how am I supposed to 
do the other paid stuff. It's because you didn't build enough value in this free offer. It wasn't money they were sacrificing. It was time they were sacrificing. It was energy that they were sacrificing. It was maybe they want to do something else. That's what they were sacrificing, okay? There's still other sacrifices, okay? Money's not the only sacrifice that people make when buying your products, okay? All right, so you got to look at that. So everyone starts here, okay? Now you want to go to the next level? Yeah. Yes. Yes, next level? Yes. Okay, so Barbie's eyes went over. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so here's the next level, okay? Again, it's not a brain buster. You have your offer. We're on page 35, by the way. Did we say that? They're all going to be pissed now. They're like, now I have a missing spot. <laughs> okay, offer. Okay, same thing. It leads into paid. Now, it's insert value deal, okay? And before the value deal, now it's the free offer. <coughs> free offer, value deal, then offer, okay? That's number two. And then once you get one working, now you start adding more of them, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rocky, you work for uh, Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins, right? Mm -hmm. How many funnels do you think they have? So many funnels. Fucking so many. <laughs> mm -hmm. So many. Okay, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Free offer, value deal. You keep going to the next level. Okay, and so essentially what this does is you're not choosing your clients. Your clients are choosing you. Okay, I mean you are choosing your clients because you branded that way, you've built all the things so you know who's going to show up, but now they're selling themselves instead of you selling them. Does that make sense? Okay, and it just automatically comes. You can't force someone to do this, they get to choose. They also get to choose this. They also get to choose this. And so when you build it up this way, it becomes less salesy. This becomes like a lighthouse. Okay, does we that make sense? Okay, who doesn't understand what I'm talking about there? Who has questions on these strategies? Okay, and you just keep doing it over and over. But like I was saying, you start one avenue and then you start to expand and expand and expand. So when people like they start looking at our business, they start seeing everything that we got. I was like, what we got is not where you start. We gotta start where, where you need to start. Get that one working and then start to expand, okay? A lot of people come to events like, oh, I'm gonna write a book and I'm gonna do a YouTube channel, oh, I'm gonna do a podcast and an event. And then guess what they end up doing? Yes. <laughs> oh, that would be so awesome. <laughs> and then once you get off, you don't even have to do the real thing. You you've told got enough it. of people about it. <laughs> so true. It makes people so uncomfortable. But you guys all know it's true. Can we agree that that's what everyone does? I think we're all guilty. We don't even have to ask them if we agree. We already know. <laughs> we already know. Okay. So now what Minky's going to do is now how do we add gasoline and fire to this? Now how do we really get it going? You guys want to know how to do that? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll let Minky take it from here. Thank you, babe. Okay, awesome. All right, go to a blank page in your book or 35 if you didn't write on it already because we're going to go through a ton. So I'm going to teach you how to create winning relationships to build your audiences to feel these. Does that sound good? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay, there's a ton, so I'm going to make sure I go through all of it. So the first one is collaborations. Who's done a collaboration or joint venture? Awesome, awesome. Okay, I want you all to take a moment, feet flat on the ground, and just close your eyes and just like get in this space for me, okay? I want you to think of your absolute favorite thing to do in this world. You can do it all day and still have a fantastic time even at the end of the day. As soon as you've got it, open up your eyes and write it down. I know it's funny, adults usually don't know right away what they love to do. Kids are like, oh, slides, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> And then 
if you have that written down, look at me. The room's pretty high. Favorite thing to do all day long. Ooh, Josh, your eyes are great. I'm just gonna stare at you all day. <laughs> okay, now close your eyes again. I want you to think of the person that you follow or you look up to that is very influential in your eyes, that you love watching their posts, you, you love reading their posts, you love seeing their videos, like you're the type that goes through their story twice. Like you just love their life and, and what they mean to you and the influence that they have on you. Okay, once you got it, open up your eyes, write it down below your favorite thing to do. And then look at me. <laughs> Who do you look up to? Follow? Who do you idolize? In any in any capacity. Okay. Doesn't have to be directly your business. They don't have to be in your industry. Okay, close your eyes one more time. Now I want you to imagine you're going to do what you absolutely love. You got the whole day blocked out. Phone off and this person's gonna join you. And it's just you two. Having this awesome day doing what you love. And then on top of it, this person loves that too. And they love doing this with you. And this is the funnest thing for them. And together, you, you guys get to show the world how fun this is and how amazing this is and that everyone should do this with their day. Standing together in front of a million people, showing them how much fun you can have and how amazing this is. All right, open up your eyes. So that actually came true for me. Who knows Grant Cardone? Ever heard of him? If not, you need to hear of him. Elena Cardone and this is his wife. They're awesome. Have you ever heard of 10X? Mm -hmm. 10X anything? That's Grant Cardone. So Elena Cardone, she is pro women can still carry. And so am I. I am the public figure for Utah Women Can Still Carry. I'm a huge Second Amendment advocate. I teach women how to shoot, can still carry, protect themselves, be a queen in their lives. I love it. Something I don't make money off of, I do it because I love it. I'm really, really passionate about it. Because I decided to step into the space to be an influential leader, I reached out to Elena who had similar interests, even though her and her husband are in real estate and investing. I knew she loved guns. I knew she was pro women can still carry in self-defense. I reached out to her and because she viewed me as an industry leader as well and took me seriously, and I presented her with this idea of doing a Women Can Still Carry video series, her response was, absolutely, let's do it. We flew out to Florida with a whole video team and spent an entire day shooting guns with like my total women crush and having a great time. And then we ended up doing, we got rained out and did the studio part back in our Airbnb. So we're on an hour road trip with my idol in a <coughs> Range Rover. I'm like, what is happening? And it was so fun. And it was so fun. And it's all because I chose to step into that space. So when I say be a leader within your industry, I genuinely mean it because the possibilities are endless. The fairy tale life that you want, that's what happens. You want an amazing spouse, you're single, that's what happens. You have to see yourself as that first and step into that identity before any of this matters, before I share collaboration sponsorships, how to build these followings, doesn't matter if you don't view yourself as an industry leader. It doesn't. Because that's what it's all about, right? Having an amazing life that you love. I don't care about a number on a screen. I don't. I care about, is it converting to clients? AKA, is it fueling my purpose? Am I helping more people with this number on a screen? Not, does it make me feel good? Is it influencing my life 
for experiences I never could have imagined. And that's what it can do for you guys. No matter where your followings are at, you can always do joint ventures, you can always do collaborations, you can even have sponsorship opportunities. And I can share with you how to do that. Who's ready to do that? Hell yeah. Okay, open up your books. We're gonna first talk about collaboration. So, your ideal collaboration is gonna be someone with a parallel message. So Elena Cardone, she's pro women can still carry. She was a good person for me to collaborate with. You need to do research before you just collaborate with someone. Mm -hmm. I am a diehard Republican, not saying I won't love you if you're a Democrat, but I'm a diehard Republican. So if I'm really pro conceal carry and pro gun, probably not a good idea to do a collaboration with someone who's against guns. Probably not a good fit, right? And you see it all the time. And what does it make you feel when you see people do that? A little bit unauthentic. It's like, okay, so are you just doing this to like share each other's audiences or do you really care about helping me? Right? And people can scope that shit out from a mile away. So they have an ideal message. They're in alignment with your beliefs and standards. If you're religious, Travis and I have potty mouths. It is what it is. My mama hates it. She's definitely like, she's funny. She will not speak on our stage because we swear. And she's a phenomenal business owner. And that's fine. I get it. It's not in alignment with her beliefs and standards. But it's also unauthentic for us to say, shoot. It's yeah. just not us, right? And so that's super, super important. And you have a complimenting core message. If you don't know that person's core message, then they're probably not a good person for you to collaborate with anyways because they're not going to help you move forward. So if you don't know your core message, you need to find that and be able to find your brand so that you actually have that. And then when you're looking for the people, you need to know what their core message is or it's not a good fit. I knew what Josh's core message was. Everyone is family. Why do you think he's on my stage? I know his core message, right? So that's super huge. And then the second one, second part of collaboration. is a win, win, win. Who's heard of a win, win, win? Raise your hand if you've heard of it. Okay, a few of you. What does a win, win mean? Just both. two. We both win. We both win. It's a win, win. Great. <laughs> so, I'm competitive. I like to take things to the next level. And I'm next gen. So it's a win, win, win. So it's a win for you, and it's a win for them, right? Classic win-win. And then it's a win for the world. If you just focus on, is this a win-win? You are selfish. You are selfish. When people come to us and say, hey, I wanna hire you, Minky Travis, help me with my branding and marketing, that's a win-win. We have to believe in that person to know that we're getting their message out to the world, that it is a win for the world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Heather, she's helping people lose weight, health, mental, like mindset, everything. So it's a win for her. She's getting compensated financially and the relationship. It's a win for them. And then you know it's a win for their family. You know it's a win for the people that they're around, right? Mm -hmm. That's how everything needs to be. And with this, the first thing you need to focus on is the value you want to give. When I approached Elena Cardone, it was a win, win, win. Win for me, she's a badass. So excited to hang out with her and I'm passionate about guns. Win for her, she's getting an entire video series and access to my following and it's all for free and I'm flying out. So it's a win for her and it's a win for the world because we really do think women should be more comfortable on firearms. That's how it needs to be. You guys really need to know the value that you can give. And you need to be creative with this. Travis and I have been building this business for a lot of years. I have a lot of value I can give. We have a podcast, Instagram, right? I've been doing really, really well on TikTok as well. Like big followings across all of these platforms. I have a stage you can speak on. I have a cruise I can offer you. Like I have so many things that I could give a value to someone from what I want from them. What I wanted from Elena Cardone was the relationship. I wanted the relationship and I wanted the significance and legitimacy that she is someone in my contact list and we are friends and I could call her up at any time. 
That does mean something to me as a business owner. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I wanted the relationship. It was worth it to invest $40,000 to go do the video series to say that I'm friends with Elena Cardone and give her that value and have her view me up here. And it's a win for the world of what you want, what influence you want to have. Before you guys even attempt to create collaboration, sponsorships, anything like this, you guys need to know all of the things that you can offer someone. When I did the analogy where I was dragging people and then I gave the $10 bill, did you notice the dollar amount per what they gave me? How much did I give them? $10. $10 for a dollar. Yeah. Big fan of the 10X that Grant and Elena do. 10X. This should be 10X what you want from them and it will create massive influence to the world. That is how people just can't even say no, right? If it's just a win-win and it's equal, probably not a good collaboration sponsorship or anything because you're not moving up. Y'all are just playing in the same pool still. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You want to be doing stuff with bigger people to help your audiences grow bigger and your name get bigger. You need to provide them 10 times the value that they would be stupid to say no. Because not only am I giving the 10 times the value, I only want one thing from you and this is going to create massive influence for you. Right? Lots and lots of things. Who has ideas with this? Or anything coming to mind of what you guys want to do with this? With collaborations and sponsorships? So this is what it all goes back to. Whenever you're reaching out to someone, anything, go back to these core principles. Okay. When you're reaching out to them, do not start about what you want. When I reached out to Elena, I told her who I was, what I do, what my idea was, what I wanted to give, how amazing it would be, and then asked if she would be interested in being a part of it. Okay? All about them, less about you. Like Travis said in the very beginning, if all you took from this event is you're posting more you and less I, you will create massive influence through your posts. Because people have a chance to empathetically go into your post and imagine that story. I do a lot of like very catchy hooks like with my posts. I'm like, what would you do when someone, if someone was so insanely rude to you? Right? So then you think to yourself, what would I do? And then I can go into my story and share my experience making it about that person the whole time and what they would do and bringing them along the story with me. I feel like a lot of people just dump. Whether that's a positive dump or a negative dump, they just like spill it all out everywhere because they have something to say. Versus how am I gonna help this person? With every piece of content you put out there, it should be not how can I make you feel about me, it's how can I make you feel about yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to write down that. Next gen influence. How is not how I can make someone feel about me, it's how I make them feel about themselves. If you ask any of the Next Gen team, we all say the same thing. It's all how you can make them feel about themselves. What I have on, on my website, actually, like my little slogan is, um, be happy in the skin you're in. I like it. So, yeah. And let's make it even better. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Oh, so fun. Okay, so you want to create a collaboration. Your first connection. You always want to respond within every 12 hours. If you guys aren't responding to messages and keeping the flow going, like with the collaboration or any joint venture that you're doing, it's gonna lose the energetic flow of like building on top of each other. So always have a rule that it has to be within 12 hours. If not, I would give realistic expectations of when you will respond and why you can't respond. Hey, I'm speaking at my event in Arizona all day. I will get back to you tomorrow. I'm so looking forward to working with you, right? Be professional with that. Communication is key, key, key. I feel like we miss it. Like we've had, we've grown our team to like nine people in the last year. And with it, we've had some like turnover of people that just weren't a good fit for the position. And Travis and I ghost were like, they don't even like quit anymore, like call you. They just ghost you, right? Don't do that, guys. Like people need the professionalism, whether it's not a good fit or not, or like you don't want to do it anymore. Just always have that communication. And I would always have a phone call with them. 
never just do stuff over the internet. When people ask you to collaborate or be like a brand ambassador or something like that, if you say, yeah, let's jump on a phone call and talk to, talk to you about it, that is crucial. People don't get on the phone anymore and you need to. You need to hear the tone. You need to be able to ask the questions. Tell me what your company's about. I love Rockwell watches. This is Rockwell too. I love Rockwell watches. I know what they're about. I know the business owners. We drove up there and met them before we even signed a sponsorship deal. They're giving us thousands of free stuff every year. Gosh, I think even like 25,000, right? And I didn't just take it. I wanted to connect with them and they've sponsored us for years now because I took that up extra step and people aren't willing to do that. So there's different types of collaborations. A lot of people ask me the terminology and you may know some of these, you may not. I'm gonna tell you kind of the code. So instead of like trying to Google it or text your friend, what the hell does this mean? I'll help you. SFS is a shout out for a shout out, either on a story or a joint post. I have a lot of women that will message me and say, hey Minky, do you wanna SFS? I won't do it. The reason being is it's not in alignment with me. If I do not know you, I do not know about your brand or your message, I'm just not gonna shout you out to my followers because that's unauthentic to me. Not that I'm selfish with my followers, because here's the thing, people get so like, I don't want to lose my following. They're not gonna unfollow you to follow someone else. It's not like they have, it's not like it costs them anything, right? They're just seeing you as a queen or a king over your, like, over your, like, tribe. So it's actually a good thing to be viewed with more people and share your following with more people. It's very interesting how people get the scarcity mindset. And if you're so worried, like if I'm so worried about doing a live with Heather, I'm like, what if they like her content better? You need to up your freaking game. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's talk, okay? TFP is usually with a photographer or product or service. That is trade for a post. So they're going to trade this for a post. Okay, the next one is giveaways. Who's ever participated in a giveaway or seen one on social media? Yep, see them all the time. Tag your five friends to enter, right? Mm -hmm. Bunch of tags. So a giveaway is usually two plus individuals com contributing a product or service for a grand giveaway. Posted on all contributing pages, usually the requirements to enter are a repost giveaway photo, share photo on your story, follow all the contributing pages, or tag three friends, etc. So we all give something free for expanded network, for them to all follow, and we all rise up together. Giveaways are awesome. If everyone is equal in contributing to it. So if I were to do a giveaway, I would do it with people with like millions of followers, okay? I would provide 10 times what they are within the giveaway. So they're able to give their followers like a shit ton of stuff that I'm contributing for free to be able to connect with them in their networks and play at that level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep, those are huge. Giveaways are awesome. One thing I will say, if you do a giveaway, set very clear expectations from the very, very, very beginning. Clear expectations of how much you'll be promoting it, posting everything like that. And the other thing I would say is track it. Don't keep doing giveaways with people that aren't showing up to the capacity and level that you are. And I, and I see people do this and they get so burnt out and they're just like, Mickey, they didn't even show up right. And I was like, okay, hey, but where's your responsibility? You didn't set clear expectations from the beginning. In a sponsorship collaborations, anything like that, you need to set very, very clear expectations. When I have speakers on my stage, I have it written out. Very clear expectations so that there's a very clear understanding. Madeline, she's on the panel. Did I have very clear expectations? Mm -hmm. Yep, and it was very clear. We had a great conversation and we've had a great relationship, right? Because there was very clear expectations. Okay, a collab, that's a collaboration. Anything involving mutual benefit of contributor, lots of variations of options. And then a paid fee, this is usually for modeling. If you have like a paid fee, you're usually waiving your rights to the photo. If they pay you to model, you are technically just waiving your rights to the photos, just so you guys know. Okay, a lot of people don't know that and they get really, really put out. So I'm just letting you all know, that's how it is. Okay, next is sponsorships. Who thinks that they're ready for sponsorships? Okay. Truthfully, you all are. You just haven't taken the time to figure out the value you can offer someone. Okay. Everyone is ready for sponsorships if you're ready to bring 10 times the value. Okay. Your value can even be who you know. 
right? Rocky works with Dean and Tony. She has connections. Heather knows Minky now. Let me connect you with Minky. I know her. We were chummy this weekend. It was so fun, right? <laughs> Even your connections could be your value. That is where, again, guys, that is where it goes back to. So sponsorships, following an engagement. Usually when you're 10K or more is when people are just outright going to pay you. Why is that? Got the audience. Got the audience. And across almost all platforms, there's a lot of things unlocked when you have 10K followers or more, right? There's swipe ups. Mm -hmm. There's different things that they can now compensate you for and they view you as a leader. The fact is, and it's so funny, I, I tell people, Shauna, she has Menchie, she hired us to help her run an influencer program across Utah for her locations. And what did we, what did we like nail down? <laughs> what did I tell you? Even the people with a million followers aren't going to be the best people for the job. Right. Mm -hmm. And after we had a meeting, after all of her influencer nights, and we talked about it, and she said, you know, the micro influencers, the smaller influencers, actually had a better relationship with her. They had more of a local mm -hmm. audience. It's all what your goals are. People are so focused on a number on a screen and they don't even look at, do they have my ideal client? They just get so fixated on a number on a screen and that's what I told Shauna. I said, Shauna, you do need to do influencer marketing for the next phase of your marketing. If you implement it without help, you will hate influencers and you will think influencer marketing is the worst thing that you ever did in your business. And she would have. She absolutely would have if she did not implement it right. Does that make sense? Yep, and or she didn't have the right person. And that's one thing that drives me up a freaking wall, okay? And this is, all right, I call this like the journey. <laughs> it's usually the journey of personal trainers. <laughs> Girls that are personal trainers will get really, really fit, and they post like sports bra shorts, almost lingerie, even they'll go the mm -hmm. boudoir route because they think they needed to get clients and get followers. And a lot of influencers just do it because they think that's how they need to get followers, right? And then they kind of, I don't want to say get morals, but they kind of pull out of it and they're like, Ooh, I'm not attracting the right people. I am getting like dick pics every day. Like yeah. they're just like, this is not my jam. Right. And so they have a following. They're this pretty girl. And then Savory comes along and Savory's like, Hey girl, like, let me do your extensions. Say this girl has 25,000 followers. Do you think she has the following to actually help? Look, she's already shaking her head. She's probably done this. <laughs> shaking her, you probably have worked with people and be like, no, you have nothing to offer me because your content does not speak to my ideal mm -hmm. client. Right. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. And that's why I said like, you, and I taught, I taught Shauna how to scope them out. Cause you've got to know, you've got to know who you're working with. And again, like alignment messages, I could not say this enough. Oh, it blocked me out of this. Okay, sponsorships there. Contracts. Who has a contract when they do sponsorships? I do sometimes. Yep, for over contract. Depending. Always do an agreement. Even if someone comes to you wanting to give you a sponsorship, ask for an agreement. Why? Expectations. Expectations. Clear, written down expectations. Don't be scared to extend a contract, guys. It's very mm -hmm. clear expectations, and it creates that good relationship going forward. Josh, why do you have a contract when you do houses? Keep things legal. Keep things legal. Mm -hmm. Keep everyone knows what they're doing. Instead of it's like, Josh, you didn't say it was that much money. It's right there on, on the agreement. On paper. On paper. <laughs> like, I've, I've got this for you. And it, it, it's, it's huge, because the thing is, do we all, like, have you ever heard something that wasn't really what that person said? Mm -hmm. That happens yeah. a lot. That happens a lot. And so that really like removes the air of misinterpretation. And I feel like a lot of the drama between people nowadays is misinterpretation. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Engagement. I would say if you have 3% or higher, that's considered good engagement. Okay? It's tricky though. Because with the algorithm, did you know if you post a photo on Instagram with words that you are going to get shadow banned? Did you know if you post more than four hashtags consistently, they're going to shadow ban you as well? Really? Mm -hmm. what? Why don't you know that? Where have you been? I've said that like six times. What's shadow, really? What's shadow banning? More than oh, sh shadow. does anyone know what shadow banning is? Do you want me to go into that? Do we want to know what shadow banning is? Yes. 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 Yeah. That is where all of a sudden, do you, have you ever realized that one of your posts that you put your whole heart into and then like yeah. no one likes yes. it, yes. no comments, you're like, I guess no one loves me. I guess I'm not enough. No, 
probably more likely that you got shadow banned. If it was a good post that you put your heart into, it's more likely that you had been previously shadow banned. Okay? Why do they do that? You guys seem to forget this. They're a business. Instagram and Facebook are a business. They have to make money. How do they make their money? Promotions. Promotions. Ads. Mm -hmm. So if you're posting a photo with words, even if like you had a book, so even if you posed with the books that I designed, they would catch those words and it would demote you. Because they think you're promoting without paying for it. Rocky, you better pay for that ad. You ain't getting, you ain't getting clients from this without paying me. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so if you have any written content under the photo, that's what you're saying? No, no, on the photo. Words oh, on the photo. On the photo. Mm -hmm. It will demote yeah. it. Just quotes. Even quotes on a photo. Well, and I have, I have to rethink I everything. know. And I have some, I have some on my page for the aesthetic. I know that people aren't going to see that post, and I actually don't even do it anymore. I used to do it. So I don't want to say it and they'd be like, Miki, you little liar. I have them on my page, and you can literally see half the engagement on those posts. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Because they're like, oh, Minky, you trickster. No. Yes, Demi. Um, I have two questions. Yes. So one, how do you know if you're a shadow fan? And then two, how do you... Oh, I love your brands. I really do. Don't hashtag your brand. Because the fact of the matter is, it's all just going to show up under your hashtag of your brand, which is a replication of your feed that they're more likely to sign, find your profile. So you just wasted a hashtag to make y'all self feel good. Right? Because people aren't going to go to the hashtag Heather Harlan Fitness to see her work. They're going to go to photos she's tagged or her profile to see her before and afters or her website. Right? So do, I would honestly spend time, write out 50 to 60, 60 hashtags that your ideal client would be searching for or following. Mm -hmm. Locations, Utah business, Arizona business, right? I work with business owners, anyone in the service-based industry. Like we work with a lot of real estate, a lot of personal trainers, like a lot of different people, a lot of MLMs. So hashtagging that is better for me than making myself feel good. Is that an epiphany for anyone? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I broke y'all's heart, <laughs> but I'm sorry. I've got to get you results. Okay. Question. Yes. Okay, so for the when you're paying for the ad to get yourself off of being shadow yes. banned, do you just do it like a one-time thing, or you're like, I'm gonna do this for like a week, or is it like? I keep paying them till they like let me go. Kind of a mafia deal. I it's not statistically like, what, I would say I do five bucks, and then kind of wait it out and see, and then do another post. Like every day? Yeah, I would post every day. Do you guys want to know how much to like absolutely like use social media, how much you should be posting? Yes. Two times a day, four different platforms. Am I perfect at this? No. Has this what? been hard as hell post since I had the baby? Days? Fucking yes. Two times a day, four different platforms. If you want to max out social media. Okay? So I'm posting two times a day. I'd probably post in the morning, at night. If you go on your insights, if your profile is not set up as a business or an influencer or like content creator, you're missing the boat because you can't even do your insights. Yes, Madeline. For Instagram specifically, there yes. are different ways to post. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that like we don't want to overload it, obviously. Yes, but and she's right. But if you're posting regularly on your story every single day, so nothing's never not on there. Yep. And then is it like reels and IDTV? Yes. And so that, that goes into a really good point. So like do always do a post. Posts are always like that's the core of all social media on Facebook, on anything, LinkedIn, Twitter, right? Always do a post. Always have a story on your Facebook and your Instagram. Always have one. They reset every 24 hours. If you always have one, it will always kind of be boosting your engagement. Okay? You can do words on stories. Um, and then she brought up a good point. IGTV. Who remembers when IGTV was introduced? Mm -hmm. Anytime you post an IGTV, they boosted the crap out of it. Like almost like running people, like running ads for you for free. Why did they do that? They need to use it. Get people into it. Yes. Why? Because who's their biggest competitor? YouTube. YouTube. Boom. What did they just come out with? Real. Real. Why? To go like this to TikTok. Yep. My friend just gained 14,000 followers in the last 10 days yep. from just posting. From just real doing real. Days. Yep. So follow with yeah, what's going on. Real. And one thing I will tell you too that no other like coach will probably even tell you. 
do not post. If you post your TikTok on your reel, you need to make it like a bit.ly or you need to hide it, like pull it into another video app, save it so that it changes the name of the video and then upload it to reels. If you're doing a YouTube link on Facebook or anything, I'm just letting you know, no one's gonna see the effing post. They hate YouTube. Why would they promote leaving the platform? Yeah. Pull it into a bit.ly, put the bit.ly link. It's a roundabout way of doing it. Do not talk about YouTube in your posts on Facebook or Instagram. Do not talk about TikTok. Don't do it. I will post my TikTok that I've saved under a different thing on my story. Sometimes I'll block it out so that you go to my TikTok and I'll just do an arrow pointing to my name on TikTok. I won't say it, go follow me on TikTok. I can do a swipe up and it will be a bit.ly to my TikTok link. Does that make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm, yeah. Who knows what a, who doesn't know what a bit.ly is? So a bit.ly, if you go to bit.ly, it's a way to like make a link look pretty or even hide a link. And this is a hard thing is some people use this for bad ways. They use bit.ly's to be deceptive. If it's like a um, porn, site. porn site or a, a virus. Okay, so know the links you're clicking on. When you get emails from people and you get like, I want to sponsor you, I want to collab, be very cautious of the link if they say go to my instagram profile and they have it don't click on the link go look at their profile i would say 50 percent of the time they don't exist that's a hack link does that make sense mm -hmm. and that's kind of like more of a safety issue but there's a lot of things that you can do and again like what madeline's saying follow the tide follow the tide and what it's doing if they introduce something new do it they're going to promote the crap out of you because they have a financial reason that they're pursuing that does that make sense mm -hmm. yes Okay, awesome. Let's go to the next one. Wait, so for example, um, if you do a TikTok video, mm -hmm. would you just do a screen recording on your phone and save it to your camera roll? You could do that. Share That's it, a way or? to do it. Mm -hmm. You could do a screen recording. I don't like to go back and edit. I'll usually pull it into InShot. That's my favorite uh -huh. video app. And then I'll pull it in and save it. Okay. And it still has the TikTok brand on it, which I think demotes it a little bit, but it doesn't flag it as fast as when you just pull it right from TikTok because you changed the name. Editing on Reels because when you save it, it doesn't have like the TikTok logo on it. And yep. Put it on yep. TikTok and then it's across all the platforms you want. Yep. Okay. So I have yep. a question. So like Reels and TikTok videos, do you want everything that you're doing to be focused on fitness, your nope. business or whatever you're doing? You know? Nope. I don't recommend it. I don't. Because I know people have a personal account and then a business account. I'm and like, I get asked I that a lot. And people even ask me with the kids. They ask me the kids thing. Should I post my kids? Do I have to post my kids? The answer is no, you don't have to. The answer is I honestly think you should. I think we're all a little... I'm a hypochondriac through and through. I will be so honest. Travis will tell you I think I'm always dying. I'm like, it's cancer for sure. <laughs> I'm a hypochondriac. Even with my son, if people want pictures of your kids, they're going to find them anyways. If people want to be creepy and gross, they're going to do it anyways. I'd rather control the content going out and it's not going to derail me from what I'm doing. I will just be safe. It doesn't not look professional if I was to post nope. something that's I think it makes you or... well-rounded. As long as you're being professional. If you're like hoeing it out in the clubs and over every guy, <laughs> like that's gonna hurt. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's who you are, yeah. right? Strippers may be a great client for you. Like not to be rude, but it's like mm -hmm. be you and be well-rounded you because that's gonna attract the ideal person that wants to follow you that's going to connect with you. They like to be relatable. They like to be relatable. Well, I follow so many like fitness influencers and mm -hmm. who have their links up, who have their website up, and then everything they post though is literally work everything, out. right? Everything and fitness. you don't know who they are. You're not connected, right? Yeah, Did you feel like you knew me when like I saw you today and met you today in person for the first time? More than I can say for a lot of yeah, people I follow like you on know Instagram. me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason I would bring my baby up in stage relatable I love my baby this okay. is my life remember life is priority first right mm -hmm. and then with that oh I was gonna say something super important and it went out my brain oh, my bad <laughs> yes being well-rounded though that is like super super important and sharing that with everyone because they need to be able to trust you you trust someone that you know okay yeah so um, to get out of a shadow band and you just I would assume it's kind of like dating someone, you know, when they kind of don't text you back, you kind of know they've shadow banned you, yeah. and then when they start texting you back, you know you're out of the shadow So you need to post jail. a pretty selfie to remind them what they're missing. <laughs> 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 so I'm is that kind of how you know you're out of, 
you're not sh that Instagram is not shadow banning you anymore. Yeah, when it, like your engagement boosts back up, okay. and they never really tell you. You just kind of right. know if you ever have that feeling like, "Hey, why did that post not get engagement?" Nine times out of ten, I bet you're shadow banned, and I tell you that to not take it personal because I feel like it takes so many people out of the game. How long does so, it take to get back in? It just depends. Mm. So this is my follow-up question. So sometimes when I see people like I know, mm -hmm. and you see their photo because you follow a hashtag. Mm -hmm. and you see that photo has actually been promoted you're like isn't that a little too i that never bugs me when i see it promoted i see that they care enough about i actually read it because i'm like they yeah, cared enough to put too, money but... behind this see okay. you read it too see it puts you off but you still read it right but it kind of puts <laughs> me off about that person like are they trying to um are, are they too desperate because they paid money to get so and picture. that may be your personal perception yeah. of it. I wouldn't say that. That's like saying someone that invests in CEO or not CEO SEO is desperate. Okay, okay yeah. Well, still pays for ads, and they're definitely not desperate. Yep, everyone pays for ads. Tony Robbins pays for ads. He ain't desperate. Everyone's paying for ads. To me, I say this person's probably in business. This person's trying to make money. What is their funnel? And I want to see what they're yeah, doing. Exactly. Right? <laughs> like I'm reverse psychology. Yep. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, no, last I thing I want to talk about, and then, yes. I even have a fake email, like an email I just use for that. Yep, yep. Oh, <laughs> yes. To see their whole funnel. You That's know. a great idea. Yes. My smart. email is full <laughs> of <laughs> things that she checked yes. out their funnel. Okay, we're going to quickly just go through a little bit of influencer marketing and then wrap this segment up and bring back on Travis. So, influencer marketing is the most cost-effective and best way to market. Connecting with influential people, we like to call them the chiefs. The other chiefs that have your ideal clients, the chiefs of the watering holes that you want to be at, connecting with them and using them to market your services is like creating a referral chain. Okay? Rocky's here. This is her watering hole. I come up to Rocky. I love Minky. Rocky's so great. She's personally endorsing me to the whole watering hole. Does that make sense? Which is in intended like creating a referral chain from her personally endorsing me does that make sense i don't think people realize that you're personally endorsing as if like a sports person was talking about a product that they use or like a sports stream so it is the most cost effective and best way to market it is easier now more than ever before to market for free and market organically because we are all connected and social media literally is like creating referral chains and creating networks within everyone else Okay, the problems that I see in the industry is, like I said, people do not represent themselves the right way. They take sponsorships or collaborations that they cannot provide the clientele for, which, again, goes back to expectations. What are you hoping to get out of it? Right? Mm -hmm. So, going back to that, if you take a sponsorship or collaboration and you don't know that person's goal and or cannot help them get any closer to that goal, you might as well walk into their store, grab something off the shelf, and steal it and walk away. I'm being so honest with you guys. As a business owner, you might as well go and do that. Just because they don't know how to market and they don't know that you're not the right for, fit for them does not mean it's no longer your responsibility. So I challenge you guys to look at it. The influencer marketing industry is getting bad raps because people don't know what they're doing. I've been on both sides. <coughs> both of my parents are successful entrepreneurs. They bring in a million on their own. I was bred to be an entrepreneur, okay? And I also did the influencing side. So I get both sides, which is why I stepped into this industry, which is why I stepped into this space is because it's the most beautiful, amazing, awesome, connected, lover way to market and people are fucking it up because they don't know what they're doing. They just think, oh, free stuff, yay! No, no, they're a business. They're a business. Know their goals, know that, know that you can deliver, be creative. It's not always a network. It's not always a direct following on Instagram. I feel like my Facebook following is actually more like avid and more loyal to me than my Instagram. I disclose that very openly. Know, know what you have to give. Be honest with it. And create win-win-wins, win, win, guys. You'll get referrals to other businesses. 
and you'll all rise by working together. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Change the industry with me, guys, because this really is amazing, and I want it to stay amazing and get even better and help everyone go to the next gen level in their business and their influence. Awesome. Okay, everyone get their answers, their questions answered? Yes. Okay, let's Woo. bring on Travis. Woo. All right, everyone stand up. Stretch. Oh, yeah. Okay, I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to tell them one thing that you learned. Okay, one thing that you learned, you're going to implement on Monday. Okay, ready? Go. How to get out of Just a second. Okay, who That's wants awesome. some Wait, more wait, free wait, resources wait. on how to make your marketing go to the next level? Raise your yes. hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so bust out your phone. Okay. So first one is uh, I have a podcast called Next Gen Coaching Chronicles. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I have some good ones. Okay, what would now. Jesus do in business? You guys know what Jesus would do in business? Okay, I talked about it, okay? I talk about, I have uh, Lena Cardone, um, I've had some Brad Lee, do you guys know who Brad Lee is? Yeah. Yeah. Talking about uh, the Diesel Brothers at Keaton Hoskins on the podcast, so check it out guys. Every Friday, I drop a podcast, okay, and the things I talk about, influence, selling, branding, marketing, right, services, giving value to the world, these common mindsets that leave us stuck. Okay, the reason why I call it Chronicles, does anyone know what Chronicles means? Yeah, Chronicles is an archive of stories or experiences. Yeah, so I share a lot of ex personal experiences and stories, and when I invite people on the podcast, I have them share their story. Keaton Hoskins was actually a really good one. And an example with Keaton, he actually wrote a book about divorce, and he posted this cover on Facebook, and he's like, what do y'all think? And I got hundreds of comments, and we actually just hosted a Halloween party with him, and I messaged him, and I was like, Kiki, I was like, Hey, I know you were looking for feedback. If you want to go a different direction or you need a graphic designer, I will do it for free. Love you much. Let me know. And he called me and said, thank you. You're going to do my book cover. I'm like, I'm going to do your book cover. <laughs> and I did it just because, A, I love Keaton. He's a great friend of mine. He's been awesome. Like, we were hosting a Halloween party the same night as him. And he calls us. He's like, Minky Travel, it's hosted in my mansion. I'm like, let's do it, I guess. Helicopter pad, I guess I could post a party then. It'll be great, right? And it was super fun, and he's been great to, like, give, give, give. We're taking him and his girlfriend to Moab. Like, it's a give, give, give relationship. I'm excited to do his book cover. I'm excited to give to him, right? Give back. Like, always find reasons to yep. give 10 times the value. Okay. So, next one is I uh, have a Facebook group, okay? It's called Next Gen Business Group, okay? It's mastermind. I talk a lot about different things. Yep, right in there. If you add it, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we do want to hold that up and show everyone. <laughs> 
Can I? Yeah, yeah, no, there we go. <laughs> okay. So, and then Minky has one too, Next Gen Marketing Group. And when you join these, if you leave your number, we'll send you a free online branding mm -hmm. program and marketing program. Now, these aren't something I just threw together. We threw together in one day. We spent a lot of time. This is very in-depth information. Hours. Okay. <laughs> that will build upon some of the things that we've talked about today. I talk a lot about like graphics and marketing and design and pulling it all together. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the, the biggest thing that essentially what it comes down to, especially now, is how much value are you giving? Okay. Mm -hmm. If someone's hired a coach and they, and they say, oh, it didn't work, what, what I basically hear is, oh, you received value, you dammed up the value inside of you and you didn't give it. That's essentially what happened, okay? Right now, guys, in your business, everyone's pulling out. Everyone's fucking getting scared, okay? Like uh, Matt was saying earlier, how many businesses dropped out in the last month? 200,000? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the time where you gain That's the majority like, yes. of, this, of the place, guys. <laughs> Now's the time. Now's the time not to get scared. Now's the time not to run into fear, okay? People who step forward in faith rather than fear are going to be the ones a year from now be in a completely different situation in their business. They will be the industry leaders. Okay, now's the time to gain the majority of the marketplace and the people that been in business, okay, Grant Cardone said it, dude, this, dude, we, we, <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? We've been preparing this for the last 10 years, man. We going all the way in, everyone's pulling out. Dude, I've been through this wave, dude. Because he knows, he knows what happens when fear starts, strikes the marketplace. Everyone starts acting like homo sapiens, Okay, and when I say homo sapien is because they essentially get in stuck into their emotions, they don't know how to operate, and they get fear and they start pulling back. They start they start investing less, they start giving away less, and they start getting frantic over their dollars and they start making fear-based decisions. And a perfect example of this is buying fucking toilet paper. <laughs> yes. Are you yeah. kidding me? I will go pluck the leaves of all the trees and wipe my ass with the leaves, okay? Rather than spend money on toilet paper if it really was like an apocalypse, right? Of where there's not a money shortage. Guys, there's no way that America's gonna fail. It can't fail. America is the superpower. If America fails, the world crumbles, okay? It's just not gonna happen, guys, okay? And the people are getting stuck into that or are gonna get ran over. And it happened to me when I first started. I got stuck into the fear. Oh my gosh, I got to save my money. I got to just get by this hard time and wait for the economy to approve. And that's how losers think. Okay? That's not how leaders think. They think, how can I add more value during this time? How can I help more people during this time? They don't go into the consumers. They go into, how can I produce more? How can I produce more value? And they get paid for it. And if you can learn that, and if you can get down these things and learn to master them, you're never gonna have to worry about money again. Okay, I promise you guys. Okay, it's just you can't let fear strike in you and start it let to run you. So if there's one thing you leave with today from this workshop, don't let fear run your life. Never make a fear-based decision. Okay, anytime it's a fear-based decision, it's never a good decision. Okay. I only make decisions in faith in love. And if I'm not in faith in love, if that's not my emotion in that moment in time, then I don't make the decision. Okay? I just don't. Because I've made fear, scared based decisions, and it's always led to worse decisions. And I've watched other clients drain their savings, drain their stock, because they're afraid of what's going to happen, and now they start losing even more money. Okay? So the offer we was talking about earlier, okay? is for those people that aren't gonna get stuck in the fear. They're ready to run forward. Okay, and again, this, this isn't for everybody, guys. This is for the person that's really ready to go to the next level in their business. So, like I was saying, we've invested $10,000 to go to some events, and it's totally worth it. It's a tax write-off, which you're gonna need, okay, in your business. You learn more value, you connect with other people. It's just a win-win-win straight across, okay? I created the Strength in Your World Leadership Experience mm -hmm. because essentially your brand and your business comes down to you, okay? Steve Jobs is Apple. Apple is Steve Jobs. It's the same, same thing. Your business is the same thing. So everything starts with your world. 
And if your world's off, your external world's going to be off. Everything starts with what you believe. Now, here's the hard part, okay? 95% of your beliefs are so unconscious, you don't even know your blocks. The same mind and body that created the problem can't solve the problem, okay? And when I mention this to some people, they're like, oh, no, I'm in a good place in my life. I'm just, I've already got what I need. I'm just cruising forward. Guys, there's no such thing as plateau. There's no such thing. Okay? There's it's no coasting. It, it's quantum physics, guys. You're either, mm -hmm. energy is either moving mm -hmm. forward or it's moving back. There's no this plateau. Okay? Energy is either moving forward or it's moving back. Okay? You want people on your team to move forward. You want your clients to move forward. You want your followers to move forward. Then you constantly have to move forward. Every decision that you make is either moving you forward or back. Okay. There is no neutral effect for any So decision. it's for those people that want to come in, self-discovery of, hey, what's really going on that's holding me back from being the best leader that I can be, okay? This isn't for broken people. This isn't for people who think something's wrong with them. This isn't for someone that thinks they're mentally unstable. It's for leaders, okay? Business leaders, okay? Branding and business workshop. Who liked the branding content I talked about earlier? Ooh, just skimming the surface, guys. <laughs> just skimming the surface, okay? If you liked what I have, we dive so much deeper into that. Before we carry on, I want to show you uh, the strength of your world. And again, it's a, an experience, okay? It's a total experience. Okay, you're going to meet other business leaders. We're going to do different types of meditations, kind of like what Josh took you through. We're going to dive to a whole new level of transformation. So that's, that's strength in your world. You're going to do uncomfortable shit. Why do you do uncomfortable shit? Because you're in your fucking comfort zone and that's why you're not doing shit. There's nothing more fun than like other influential leaders like doing uncomfortable stuff and just like loving life. Mm -hmm. I love it. So okay. fun. I want to share, um, again, little testimonials of the experience. <coughs> skeptical that's for sure I've always heard about the the coaching realm and the leveling up and I mean I come from sales I've read a lot of self-help books and I'm like all right it's just gonna be one of those kind of seminars you know just get up there and just rah-rah and that's it but it was nothing like that it was so enlightening just for myself personally it was all so amazing the speakers were phenomenal I can't imagine like a better experience for somebody that's going through a hard time or trying to find their identity. I know that I struggled with my identity before I came here and now I'm like pinpointing things like, oh yeah, that's me, that's who I am. The first time I came, I was so much resistance on my end, like two days, 12 hours a day and it's like, well oh, man, that's a lot to put into this. But. You get so much more, like you get a lifetime of experience in two days. It was very emotional and empowering. And there were a few speakers that really resonated with me, even though I've done other events and other things and workshops, you always come away with something. And I've learned a lot and made some really good friends and it's been amazing. It's always nice to have somebody to pick their brain and learn from. So I just, I found it and came because I believe as a coach, it's important to always kind of keep your learning ahead of your earning. And for me, it was like, 
if I tell people to go invest in themselves and I'm the one preaching it, it's like, well, what am I doing? So it's always fun to kind of diversify and get different angles and different experiences. So this was this one that seemed seemed relevant. I know so many of like my clients and my friends and my family. I'm like, oh, they would love this. Oh, what about this person? What about this person? So I'm really, really excited. And I've already talked to a few people and told them, you have to come to this next one. It's in January. Like already plan out on your schedule because I'm so excited and they need to come. It'd be amazing to have my wife here. So that I feel we could both grow together because I was able to go through things. I know she has experiences in her past that she's been able to go through that I haven't and just to help us kind of become more of a cohesive unit. You're gonna learn who you are, what's holding you back, and if you show up in little ways in your life a certain way, you may not even realize that it's impacting you in bigger ways. You'll never ever regret investing time and money in yourself, but to my whole goal, once I sat down and realized what this was, was to leave with love for others and for myself and tools to take massive, massive action. I think we all have limiting beliefs and for me previously it was that my best wasn't good enough. And now I know that that's not true. And I gave myself permission to let go and I'm excited for the future. The things that Travis was able to say and the experiences helped me realize transformational coaching is a legit thing and it's something that I'm really excited to kind of dive into more. Okay, so those just a few people of the thousands of people that have gone through that event, guys. Truly incredible. So, ticket to strengthen your world. Ticket to the Next Gen Branding and Business Workshop. Meeting with our team, okay? Total 1900 Okay, and we did that all for $400. So before break, I said, listen, I got a better deal for you guys. You want to see it? Yep. Well, I don't have to, and you guys want to see this? Yeah. Okay, I mean. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I want you guys not to just come to this by yourself. I want you to bring a friend. I want you to bring a spouse. I want you to come with your business partner. So I'm going to throw in another ticket to this workshop. So again, the tickets are $547. Okay, so I'm going to throw in another ticket. Okay, same thing with the branding and business workshop. Okay, I'm gonna throw in another ticket for that too. Same thing, bring your spouse, bring your business partner. You guys need to be on the same page. Okay, again, that workshop is $347. Okay, also on top of that, okay, Sam, I was talking to, I was like, Sam, do you have some time to meet with people? Can I throw you in on the deal? So if you were to meet with Sam, okay, conservatively, I mean, for someone his level, you're gonna be paying about $400 to meet with someone like Sam. Mm -hmm. So what Sam's gonna do is he's going to essentially break down all your finances. He's gonna help you organize it. He's gonna help you structure. He's gonna see where you're at, you're investing, okay? Where are you not investing? And he's gonna help what's fine right for you. I love Sam. I don't call him Sam though, I call him Uncle Sam now that I have a kid, so <laughs> it's <Yeah>. Uncle Sam. <laughs> um, I've learned so much from this, this man about money and I know that I will continue to learn about money from this man. He's just brilliant and I and just his background and what he's getting through, he really does want to liberate the world of money. And so you need someone like Sam in your life, especially when shit starts to go haywire. You need someone to call and say, hey, what's going on here? What do you see? And when I talked to Sam, when this whole thing started with COVID, and I was like, what do you see, Sam? And he told me, I was like, really? I don't know if I see that. And as things went on, sure enough, he was totally right in what he said. Mm -hmm. He was totally right in what he said, and I didn't see it. And here's the thing. Leaders have vision, okay? Leaders have vision. You want to be around other leaders that have vision. Josh has vision with real estate, okay? Mm -hmm. Trista, Ellie, they have vision fitness. You want to be around leaders that have vision, okay? So you're going to get, a, again, another ticket to Strength of the World, ticket to Branding and Business Workshop, a session with Sam. Okay, so what does that total out to be? So that's... Th I'm not a magician. 13, 1300. <laughs> okay. So that's another 1300. Okay. So the total all together would be what? 3200. Okay. All that for $400, guys. That's not good enough, though. If you do it today, though, okay, if you do it today, here's what else I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to throw in a month free. So you're going to get one free month of the mastermind okay and the mastermind is specific what do you do in your business this week how to step by step okay not 
It's not the inspirational feel good. It's not let's get over your beliefs like, okay, time to fucking get to work. What do we need to do? Okay, so you're going to get a month's free worth of that. It's $27 a month moving forward. The last like, segment we did was how to put together your Black Friday deal and offer it. Yep. Just to give you an idea of what we offer every week, Frank, me, and Travis all do videos on all like a certain subject to help you move forward that yep. week. In it's, your end, it's end of the year. What are you doing on your taxes? Here's some mm -hmm. things that you want to do. Hey, it's health insurance time. Here's the people you need to contact. So we start to give out our contacts, people to talk to. So very specific things. Okay, so you're going to get one month free of that. And then we got one more thing that we're going to throw out to you guys. Okay, so we're going to throw in a, a book. So this is a past book. It's a one-year transformational book to help you hone in on specific patterns and behaviors that will create your success. Okay, so I only have five of these left though. Okay, so this will be for the first five people that get it. That get this deal. Okay, Alona will be in the back. Okay, and then we're going to do all of this. <sighs> okay, all of it. And it's today only. Okay, you call me up tomorrow and I'm going to say, nope, I only work with people that are committed to moving fast, not people that want to wait for others and take this. Make, take forever to make decisions, okay? You're gonna get ran over. Okay? It's for people that wanna make decisions, okay? And move forward. All this for 197. What do you guys think? Woo! Okay, yes. now, again, if this, is, if this is for you, if you're going on like, man, I really like to learn this just for you, I promise this is the worst investment you could ever make. Hands down, the worst investment you can ever make. If you're investing in saying, hey, I wanna take what Travis and Minky have learned, and I want to learn from Santa, I want to learn from others of these leaders and speakers, I want to take that into my business, and I want to find how to deliver it moving forward, it'll be the best investment. Okay, if it's just for you, and you just changing, which is why I said earlier, you have to have a business, and you're wanting to give this forward. If it's not, if it's just for you, it's not a good investment. Okay, it's for you to learn these things, better branding, marketing, services, all these things for you to be better to move forward. Okay, we'll sit down. Okay, we're going to be in town for the next couple of days. So for people who are here, we'd we're going to be here Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So we'd love to have you come here, sit down, do a strategy session, me, Minky, and Frank. Okay, and we'll essentially break down your business. Hey, what are your goals? Where are you at? Maybe you're just thinking too small. Maybe you need to think bigger. Maybe you haven't saw this part of your business. Okay, then we're going to see what are your barriers? What are your personal blocks that's really holding you back from getting to these? What's your game plan? Okay. What are you actually doing? And then we're going to share our 500 foot view okay. of all the different marketing, branding, influence, web, and then we're going to give you two views, okay? What you're doing really good, what you got going for you, your natural strengths. Sometimes you guys don't see how awesome you really are. And then we're going to show you what you're doing not so good. <laughs> Do we need to see both? Yeah, we have to see both, okay? Very loving. Our whole goal is to help you, so very loving. What do you got going for you? What are you doing really good? And then what do you need to improve on? And then we'll share what does it look like moving forward, okay? If it's a good fit, we'll share what we have. If it's not a good fit, maybe it's not the right time, or maybe we're just not the right team to help you, and maybe it will refer you to someone else. If you do say yes to our program, it doesn't mean you're in our program, okay? The next step is we go and we say, hey, here's our expectations, here's the program that works. And if you don't agree to how we run our process, then it's not a good fit. So just because you say yes to work with us doesn't mean you're automatically in it. We have a very uh, systemized process for doing it. We do guarantee our results, so that's why we want to make sure that if we're working with someone, we know we can implement and really get it done on their end. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, if it's not, no big deal. You get to choose, okay, on, on what you decide. So again, let's sum up the offer. Uh, two tickets to Strength the World. When are those dates again? No, I have a gift for everyone. Oh, you have a gift. Go ahead and show your gift. I have a gift for everyone. Okay. Who's had a good time at this event? Ooh. Who wants to always to remember to be next gen in their marketing? Let's go. I've created certificates for you guys, for everyone that completed this workshop, so that you guys can always remember and look at this and remember the people that you met the things that you learned, all of your experiences, and that you really are next gen, and you can be next gen and innovative in your marketing. I personally want to give this to you and write this out to you, so at the end of the event, 
please come back there. I want to meet you, and I will make it out to you and gift it to you. Is that good, guys? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Woo! I love giving gifts. <laughs> okay, yep, you're going to get that. So I'll give you two tickets to Strength of Your World, so when are those dates? So we got one January 29th yep. and 30th. Okay, are they in there? So January 29th and 30th, That's that one's in Utah. And then August 28th and 27th and 28th in is Arizona. And then we have another one in Utah, October 15th and 16th. If you've never been to Utah and you're from Arizona, it's really fun. It is really fun. You are totally welcome in Utah. And then business and branding workshop. Dates are February 19th and 20th. And then that's in Utah. And then March 19th and 20th in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, I would love to do this in person. Okay. So if you can arrange it in the next couple of days. We would absolutely love that. If it doesn't, maybe it's just Zoom. That's totally fine. I prefer in-person stuff, so mm -hmm. I'd prefer to talk to you guys in person. Okay. Sam's staying in town too, by oh, the way. Oh, Sam, ha, Sam, how long are you staying in town? Tuesday. Tuesday. He extended his trip. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right, we'll hang out. We'll it's just a party. Imagine, okay, I'm going to do a picture for you guys. Imagine Shark Tank, where all the sharks, but instead of just being like, we well, have a great business, like we want to be a part of it, or it's like, nope, you suck. We actually tell you how to move forward. Like the whole goal of it is how can we help you move forward? And you get all the aspects. What are you doing with money? What are you doing with your digital strategy, marketing, brand? And we're real with you. I'm probably the harshest, yet people go away loving me the most. I think it's just because I'm the girl. <laughs> They're like, oh, but she's so nice. But yes, like we want to tell you what you're doing, things that people won't tell you. Because I'm sorry, your friends are just going to tell you you're doing great. Because they love you. And we love you too, but we love you enough to tell you. How it needs to be, guys. <laughs> okay. So again, mm -hmm. today 197. If you do it tomorrow, I'll still honor the 400. Okay. Anytime you want to do the 400, I'll honor that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But the 197 is today. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. Okay. So Alona will be in the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go on a 15 minute break. Okay. Um, who's joining us after for uh, business party? Raise your hand. Cocktail party. Woo! So fun. Awesome. I'm excited. Yeah.